Hello again everybody and welcome back to Test Flight and the Gazelle. I'm going to get back into the aircraft in a moment to look at systems and how they are going to work for us in the air. I just wanted to come back here and show a modification to my flight plan that I made for this segment and that I have four waypoints set up that are going to take us to different features out here in the 60 series ranges from Creech. And I also have at Mercury, Nevada, an NDB on 326 kilohertz that I'm going to tune into and use to navigate. In fact, that's what I'm going to do initially before I really get into the onboard INS Nadir system. I'm just going to do radio navigation, getting airborne, flying out to Mercury, guiding on that NDB. I might take it up north and just sort of poke around in the Frenchman and Yucca Flats, Nevada test site area, and then come back down to Creech. So let us get back into the Gazelle, get her airborne, and start to look around. I'll be right back. And back on the ground in the cockpit at Creech, I have it started up to the point where I'm at ground idle. And the way that I always do this is that I perform whatever procedures I'm trying to learn. And then after the fact, I go back and read the manual again. There's always something or a number of things that stand out to you after the fact that you either got wrong or sort of missed the first time around. I'll cover these as I get to them here. I guess first, one thing that was puzzling me as I was, actually I didn't even notice it until I was editing the previous videos together, is why at this point I have the generator light off telling me that the generator is running, but I have the alternator light on telling me that the alternator providing AC power is not running. And that is because the generator and the alternator have a different RPM threshold. So. I'm at about 25,000 RPM on the turbine. That's enough to run the generator, but not enough to run the alternator. So for example, if I were to try to get the ADI to align, or if I were to try to turn on the directional gyro or any system, SAS that runs off of the alternator, it would not work at ground idle. That's interesting. So to me at least. So another thing that I noticed is that the hydraulic switch right here, I got to a point last time where I was looking for a servo test that I was directed to run and I believe this would be the only one the hydraulic system is just basically there to run the servos that are going to control the pitch of the blades and this hydraulic test would have been what that was referring to so okay let's go ahead and press on from here and this time I'll pay attention to lighting I have navigation lights and I have anti-collision light controls right here I'm going to put the navigation lights to I believe that's steady I can either have them steady or blinking and you'll be able to tell which one that bottom position is from the external view, I'm sure. And then for the anti-collision light, I'm just going to have it to the normal, I believe, just blinking position. And yeah, I can't really see from here what that did to them. But yeah, that's how you control them. And then I have an additional interior panel lighting and cockpit lighting that I'm going to leave off since I, I don't really need any of that. I also have UV lights that I could illuminate that would make the uh, panels more visible if I needed it, but I'm going to leave all that other stuff off. And additionally, I was trying to figure out what was run off the 26 bolt step down transformer off the alternator, and it is in fact the directional gyro that I'll be able to control, and I will this time from this panel right here. And yeah, we'll see that in action once we get airborne. It's just going to be taking off. I'll hover taxi or attempt to hover taxi out to the end of the runway there, take off, and then it'll just be straight due west to the Mercury NDB that I'm going to tune in here momentarily. Speaking of that, let me go ahead and pre-do that, pre-configure the NDB. So to do that, I'm going to come over to the seat so I can see past the collective. Now the ADF radio is going to have two different settings, left and right, that I can use. And to switch between the two, there's a simple switch right here. So I can just have two beacons, for example, tuned in and just switch between them just readily like that. Now for Mercury, I want to turn to 326, and this dial right here has it's actually three dials, one for the hundreds, one for the tens, and then another for just the single numbers and the decimals, so I want to go for three, two, six. And this will tune me in, yeah, right there, 326. Now I just need to go to the ADF position on the power dial and then I can verify it by putting the tone switch on so I should if I listen closely at least get a Morse code tone which yeah I couldn't really pick up uh, underneath the background noise but I can see that the smaller pointer right there on my navigation instrument is pointing due west 
which is the direction that it should be pointing for the Mercury and DB. So I'm going to assume for now that that's all set up. So let's come back to the right side of the cockpit. We'll disengage the rotor brake. It's locked forward. And then to do the lever here, I'm just going to click. And once I've clicked it, I can look away. And actually, before I do this, I need to get a sequence here so that I can be able to readily start this clock. So even before I come up here and even grab that lever, I'm going to start the timer. I'll click the lever, and then I can look away. I'm just going to slide the lever forward. Okay, so turbine RPM's coming up. The alternator, okay, there goes the rotor. Okay, that is locked forward. Okay, so I've got pressures and RPMs building up. Lights are going to go out in sequence. And where does the alternator kick in? I'm up to, yeah, right about there, about 40,000 RPM. Okay, so my turbine is up to speed, and that's just going to be by a, an electronic governor held in there at about 40, 43 and a half, 44,000 RPM. And here comes my rotor. Coming up on about 40 seconds or so. And I just have the autopilot and the pedo lights on. And about 50 seconds. Okay, I guess that is a little bit... Well, yeah, I guess the timer should technically start at the point that the rotor starts to turn. And the clutch engages. So, okay, that's I'll take that as good on the timing. I'll reset the timer and we'll press on from here. Now... I will hit the low-hanging fruit here, I'll get pedo on, and I'll go ahead and engage the, the SAS system. I'll do the operational check, I'll disengage SAS. It goes off scale low on the needles and re-engage it, and that's set up and ready for me. Let me go ahead and engage the directional gyro, I'll go to the GM position, that's, let me see, a gyromagnetic, or just magnetic gyro position. That's going to take, I think, about a minute for that to get warmed up and aligned. So that's all squared away. Let me go ahead and get my ADI re-squared away right there. And I'll just let it damp out and release it. And I need to set my bug up to 93%. And I'll engage the trim system. I will... Let me see if there's anything else that I really, really want to do here. I think that's it. And it, yes, you can see it goes a lot more quickly when I'm not describing everything step by step. It really, really is a very simple startup procedure that we have here. Okay, let me make a double check of my checklist and sweep around the cockpit. I'll be right back once I'm ready to get airborne. Okay, I am all set. One other thing I'm going to do is, although I'm not really going to use it extensively until I really read up on it, probably in the next, the next little uh, mission that I do, I'm going to warm up the Nadir INS or just navigation system and have it on although I'm not going to use it extensively until I can read up some more and I also have landing lights that I can control I just mapped these switches in fact so I can go to the on position on the landing light and then use this switch to uh, just sort of raise and lower the light and I'll show that in external so you can see I think what it's doing I think that's working the way that it should right now but yeah for now daylight I'm just going to leave that off and I'll have to try to do a night mission as part of this and I think the campaign is going to be really focused on night missions anyway once that does come out so we'll be able to use that and see that in action a little later okay the net is still going through its process for the warm-up let me let me wait until this is done and all these lights go off and that'll also get rid of the flags up here I believe for distance and all the other information yeah, I'll be right back once this is warmed up Okay, so warm-up is complete. I'm going to put it to the terror position, or just the normal, just over land navigation system. And what I'm going to do is, just as an operational check here of my pointing, I have steer point 3 set up as the NDB location. So there we go, the needles coincide, so that is a good confirmation that I have a... Yeah, that, there we go. The larger needle is pointing to the net ear waypoint. In this case, it's off at 060 to our left. The smaller needle is pointing to the NDB station. So yeah, that's a good confirmation that that is working correctly, and I'm just going to navigate off of the NDB this time. Okay, so reading through the checklist here, I have some advice from the manual on how to handle this. It says, avoid large movements of directional control pedals to the right in order not to exceed the uh, torque limit and the temperature limits. And then it says, take off without hesitation to maintain hover, head into the wind at a height of about three to five feet above the ground. Check the max torque is not exceeded. And then it recommends that I turn into the direction of rotor rotation, in other words, to the right. 
Okay, so let me touch the checklist. We'll go ahead and get this thing hovered. So let's go ahead and call for a hover check. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do with ATC. I'm going to go back to 124 and have my flight frequency up so we'll be able to listen in as 2 gets airborne and do some comms checks with the wingman. Okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and give this a shot and see how this goes. I am going to ease back on the collective and just, okay, I can feel a little bit of left turn. I'm going to compensate by going just for that little equilibrium point with right pedal. Okay, a little more collective, more right pedal, right about there. I'm creeping forward. We try to arrest that creep forward, and okay, let me get back off there. I was trying to go aft on the, the cyclic to keep myself from creeping forward like that. Okay, this time I'm just going to let it happen. Okay, so, and I'll just take the result. Okay, collective up, right pedal. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, creeping forward again. I'll just take it, I'll let it happen. Collective up. Okay, we're in our hover. Let's go for about. Well, I can't really, I can't really tell exactly how far up I am, and yeah, that's about right. That's probably about. It feels like about six or seven feet. So that is. That's not too bad. That's actually. Let me see. I think right now I just have a little bit of right pedal, and just a little bit of aft and right. Okay, maybe I have a little bit too much right stick. Let me just let her settle right there. Well, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of ground effect and cushioning as you as you come down like in the Huey. So yeah, that is a little a little different. So I've just got to be more aware, I guess, of managing the collective as I'm in the hover. I, I didn't do anything to the collective; it just sort of settled on its own right there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do this. I think I've got it down enough to get us into a hover taxi out there to the right, and then I'll transition into forward flight. Okay, let's go up on the collective, right on the pedal. Be a little bit more aggressive this time. Okay, there we go. A little bit more right pedal. Yeah, it's just a little touch of right stick. And it just unsticks and comes and comes straight up. A little bit of right, just a touch of right cyclic and just slightly aft on the on the cyclic is what it took right there. As I kissed the ground, that's okay. And yeah, I'm just sort of having a little bit of trouble managing the pedal. And it's so touchy getting it to do what I want it to do here. But that's... <laughs> It's passable, I guess, so yeah, I'll just continue the hover taxi out here, a little bit of collective. Yeah, not not a whole lot, I, I think ground effect was there that time, just not, not pronounced. Not that big cushion like you get in the Huey, which, yeah, I'll, I'll think about that some more later. Okay, let's go ahead and transition, let's go ahead and bump the nose down, okay, already there. So I have centered out the pedals, let's go through transitional lift, and now it's just, and yeah, now it's just flying beautifully. I am completely neutral on the controls. I just plugged in a little bit of nose down trim using the trim hat right there. So yeah, this is just what yeah, I think I noted it during the during the first video where I was just flying it around. Uh, that's that's actually the first hover transition I've made from the ground, but yeah, it just flies beautifully once you once you get it unstuck and airborne. Okay, I'm just going to take it straight on out. Okay, guiding straight, almost due west towards the NDB, and I'm not going to get lost, I can, I'm just going to follow, really, just follow the road around there, and that'll put me there just fine. I've got the SAS engaged, now let me just see, I'm going to disengage the SAS, and see if there's, yeah, I, I can tell it's, yeah, something happened there, there was a little bit of twitch, so yeah, that's, that's confirmation for me that the SAS is doing something right here, yeah, I can tell it's, just a little bit of, like, for example, bump of the stick. It, I think with the SAS engage, that will damp right out. Let me go ahead and engage it. And yeah, and it, it damps. Like, one cycle and it damps right there. Whereas with the SAS disengaged, it, yeah, it just continued to oscillate right there. Okay, so that is, you know, that confirms what I thought originally, that the stability augmentation system is, there's more to it than just the autopilot functions, the altitude and the speed hold. It is actually doing something right now for us. Okay, so let me put in a little bit more collective to get us into a climb and just watching the vertical velocity indicator over here as I come up into the terrain. And I think, yeah, I'm just going to have to get into a habit of where and when to look and just to come up with an instrument sweep. Yeah, for airspeed, vertical velocity, altitude, 
radar altitude. I never did turn this on, did I? Okay, let's see. Rotate the switch. And then, yeah, there we go. Then I can set the bug. I'll set this to 50 meters. And, yeah, there we go. Do a quick test. Okay, light on. Okay, and that should, I should see this start to spool down as we get up here into these, these hills. Okay, yeah, very neat. Very neat. Now... Okay, I'm guiding just directly at the NDB. Let me go through the manual a little bit here, find out what I want to cover next, and I will be right back.